As I'm sure you're well aware of, Linux is another operating system you can run on your computer. Used by those weird fringe crowd people in the neckbeards, Linux is something you hear about, but you probably never actually use. Well, that's about to change. Linux is, in fact, not an OS, but a kernel. The kernel is what sits between your hardware, BIOS or UEFI, and the actual OS the computer runs. On Linux, the actual operating system for most distributions is called GNU, or GNU. Linux, the kernel, was created by Linus Torvalds when he was in college in 1991. The Linux kernel is very similar to Unix, which is an OS created by AT&T's Bell Labs in 1969. Unix was very popular, but was sold at a price, and the source code was a paid privilege to have. The Linux kernel was created as a free alternative to Unix that kept the same familiar structure. The name Linux is derived from Linus, and the X is a hint to Unix, Linux's proprietary sibling. The GNU project created the GNU OS, which is most commonly run on top of the Linux kernel. Most people refer to this combo as GNU Linux, or GNU plus Linux. You have probably used a version of Linux in your lifetime, though. One of the most prominent examples is the Android operating system created by Google. Android runs on a heavily modified Linux kernel, with the OS being Android, paired with Google's Java Runtime, ART, and Dalvik. In addition, most servers that give you Facebook, YouTube, Cancer Research, and other cloud computing all run on a version of GNU or Linux. The Linux kernel is extremely light on system, and very versatile, so it's preferred for a server where every ounce of horsepower costs a lot of money. So now you have to answer, why use Linux at home? Well, first and foremost, you have to understand that GNU Linux is not a one-to-one -one replacement for Windows or Apple's OS X. GNU Linux is an alternative with its own set of programs and features. You wouldn't expect iMovie from OS X to run on Windows, and the same goes for Linux. However, there is an alternative for almost every program or feature you use on OS X or Windows. Linux has video editors, web browsers, even the popular ones like Chrome and Firefox, office suites, and more. Switching to Linux is just learning the alternatives, which most of the time are faster and more customizable. With GNU Linux comes FOSS, F-O-S-S, free and open source software. Software that is created by the community for the community. A prime example is OpenOffice. OpenOffice is developed by Apache with the help of the community to create a free and open source office suite. It works extremely well and is free for anybody to use, customize, or build themselves. With GNU Linux, there's a slew of FOSS programs created by the community. When you switch to Linux, think of it this way. When you're young, you learn to ride a bicycle. You get pretty good at it, and then you learn exactly where the brakes are, the pedals, and how fast you have to go to make that next jump. But when you get into a car, and suddenly everything is different. There are more pedals, the handlebars are now a wheel, and if you know how to use it, you can go much faster than a bicycle. Linux is not Windows, and it will never be, but learn to use it and you can do so much more. There's a great blog post on this, give it a read here, click on the link on the screen. But keeping with realistic expectations, it's best to learn GNU Linux over time. Make a live Linux USB of your distro, play around with it, google some cool things to do, or simply try to see if you can edit a picture. It's all about adjusting to a new layout, but once you are there, the potential is unlimited. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more in the Linux series. Next up, we'll talk about how a noob can switch to GNU Linux as their primary OS.